In this video, you're going to learn how to find the surface area and the volume of three-dimensional figures. We're going to talk about cones, we're going to talk about pyramids, we're going to talk about uh, prisms and cylinders and spheres. So let's get into this video and we're going to go through the formulas. I'm going to show you an easy way to remember these formulas and how to group them together so that you don't forget them and you'll be able to solve these problems easily. So let's get into the first group of problems. The first group, we're talking about prisms, okay? And basically what a prism is, a prism is a figure, a three-dimensional figure where the two bases are parallel, okay, and they're congruent. So that means they're the same size and shape, and they're parallel, they don't cross, okay, if they were to continue to go, and they're separated by the height, okay. Now I group cylinders, okay, with these prisms because a cylinder is really like a circular prism. You can see the two bases are circles, and they're separated by that height. So when you think about cylinders and prisms, think of them all as one group. So we're gonna do the surface area and the volume. So first of all, let's do the volume of this figure. Now, when you do the volume, the formula, the general formula is very easy to remember. It's the area of the base times the height. So that's why I did a capital B. So the area of the base means you find the area of the bottom, that's what it sits on, and you multiply it by the height. So essentially what this is like, it's like taking the area of this square in this case, okay, which is 16 inches squared, and it's like taking those squares, like a stack of sticky notes, and you stack them up, okay, 10 inches high. So you take the area of the base, which is 16, times the height, which is 10, which is gonna give us 160 inches cubed. Now the reason it's cubed is because, you know, we're filling these up with like little ice cubes you could think of, okay, uh, something like, like that, right? So a little one by one by one cubes, and that's how many are gonna fill up the inside of this box, right? Now let's talk about the surface area for a moment. So the surface area is like if you were gonna take a paintbrush and you were gonna paint all the sides you know, of this figure. So when we think of the surface area, this is the formula that you wanna memorize. It's 2B, okay, the capital B means the area of the base, two of them, because you have a top and a bottom, plus the perimeter of the base times the height. Now let me see if I can show you a three-dimensional uh, figure to help you to kinda of understand this better. So what I have here, okay, with us, is basically a square prism, okay? So you, you can see that there's a square there at the top, there's a square at the bottom, okay? So if we take the area of this square plus the area of this square, that takes care of the two bases. But now if you can kind of see here, see the perimeter of this square? Okay, so you're following me? So if you take that perimeter, if you unfold this figure, that's the perimeter of that base, okay? So remember, this was folded up like so, okay? But when we unfold it, that's the perimeter of our base times the height. And when you take the length times the width or the base times the height, you're getting the area of this rectangle. Okay, so you're with me so far? So if I was to draw a net, okay, net is like if you were to unfold the shape, what you would get is something that looks like this. You would get four rectangles and you would have a square here and a square here. It's like taking a shoebox and unfolding it. You might wanna try that. And so basically this dimension right here is the perimeter of the base. This dimension here is the height, and that's where we get the P times H. That's what gives us the lateral area, or the area of the sides. Then you just add the two bases, the top and bottom. Okay, so let's do this. So basically the perimeter is gonna be four plus four plus four plus four, which is 16, times the height, which is 10. Okay, so on my little diagram here, this would be 10, and this would be 16, right? So that's 160. Okay, plus the two bases. Now the base is a square, so that's four times four is 16, times two, since we have two of them. So we have 32, plus 160, which is 192 inches squared. Okay, now when you do area, it's square units because you're covering the surface with these little one by one squares, okay? And that's how many would cover the entire outer surface. Okay, so are you with me so far? So now let's go over to this shape here. I'll try this one on your own if you can. And uh, basically what we're gonna do is do the same thing. This is a triangular prism. The top and bottom are triangles. They're separated by that height, which you can see is 12. So let's start with the volume first. So the volume is the area of the base times the height. Okay, now, because this is a triangle, what you wanna do is you wanna think of the area formula for a triangle. That's one half little b times h. So this is like our base here, three. This is like our height of our triangle here, four. So this is gonna be one half times three times four. And then our height is gonna be 12, okay? so. You don't want to get the heights confused. This H is for the overall height, the distance between the two triangles. This H is really for the height of our triangle, okay? So that's why I recommend just memorizing the general formula, 
then you can break it down into the sub formulas for each individual problem. So let's go ahead and simplify this. So this comes out to, let's see, three times four is 12 times 12 is 144, and half of that is 72. And I didn't put the units here, so I'm just gonna say units cubed for the volume, all right? Now let's go over to the surface area. So surface area is really the total outer area, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same formula that we were talking about here earlier, okay, which is the 2B plus PH. So two bases plus the perimeter of the base times the height. So in this case, the base is gonna be a triangle, so that's gonna be two times one half base times height, plus the perimeter of the base times the overall height. So let's see if we can do this. So basically two times a half, that's one. So I'm just gonna cancel those out. The base of the triangle is three and the height of the triangle is four. The perimeter of the base, you have to add all these up. Three plus four plus five, which gives us 12 and the overall height is 12. So we get 144 plus 12, which is 156 units squared because this is area. So we're just covering this with these little squares. Now, if you wanna see a net, okay, like an unfolded uh, picture of this diagram, let me see if I can put that here for us. It would look something like this, okay? You would have three, four, and five, okay, so when you unfold this, and then you would have a triangle over here like this and a triangle over here like this. So if when you fold those, that's gonna be the top and the bottom. So that's where we're getting this uh, 12, that's the perimeter, okay, times the height, which is this height here, that's 12. So that's how I'm getting 12 times 12, which gives you this area 144. Then you just have to add the two bases, the two triangles to get the total area. Okay, one more, now we're gonna talk about cylinders. Again, a cylinder is like a circular prism. You have the top and bottom are circles, they're separated by that height. So let's start with the volume. So the volume is the area of the base times the height, right? So notice I'm using the same formula for all these prisms, cylinders, we're treating them as a group, okay? So the area of the base, it's a circle, so I'm gonna write the sub-formula for the base, which is pi r squared times the height. So in this case, the radius of the circle is three, so that's gonna be three squared. The overall height is six, so if we do this, this is three squared is nine, times six is 54 pi. You can put pi in your calculator, 3.14, and multiply these together, but I'm just gonna leave it as 54 pi meters cubed and again, that's how many little ice cubes that you know, are one meter by one meter by one meter that would fill this gigantic cylinder. Now, if we wanna do the surface area, okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, again, think of this as a, a net. So if we unfold this, like if I was to take some scissors and cut that right there and unfold it, you're gonna have a circle here, a circle here, and you're gonna have a rectangle here. When you ro roll that rectangle, let me see if I can show you with a piece of paper here, it's gonna look like this, right? So there's the circle at the top, there's a circle at the bottom, but when I enroll this, there's our rectangle right there. Now, when you look at this dimension here, okay, this dimension is really the circumference of the circle, right? So when I enroll that, this is the circumference, that's just another name for the perimeter, okay, of the base. So we're gonna use our formula 2B plus PH, but remember the perimeter is really this dimension, okay, that's like unrolling this uh, circle here like this. So this is gonna give us two pi r. This is our height. So that's where we get our perimeter, two pi r times the overall height plus two bases. Remember the base is a circle, so pi r squared. So now all we have to do is substitute in the values. So we've got two pi, the radius is three squared, plus two pi, the radius is three, and the height is uh, six. And we just have to simplify. So this would be nine times two is 18 pi. This is 18 times two is 36 pi. If we add those together, we get 54 pi meters squared. And it's just a coincidence that these both came out to 54 pi. This is meters squared. This is how many square meters would cover the outer surface of this cylinder. So again, think about volume and surface area, you know, just these three basic formulas, B times H, the area of the base times the height, and then the surface area formula, 2B plus pH to find the outer area. Okay, next we're gonna talk about pyramids and cones. Let me erase this board and we'll uh, start with those. Okay, now we're gonna talk about pyramids and cones. And you wanna group pyramids and cones together just to help you to narrow down the number of formulas you have to memorize and just make it easier overall. So a pyramid and a cone, you'll notice they both just have one base. So they just have the one bottom, unlike prisms that had a top and a bottom that were parallel and congruent. These just have one base, and you can see they go up to a point here, okay, this one uh, vertex point at the top. Now, 
When you look at a pyramid and a cone, they've got two different uh, things going on. They've got this overall height, okay, which goes right down to the center of the base. See this 12 right here? And then they have something called the slant height, or which they use the letter L for, which I kind of call it the leaning height because it's on an angle like that. So that's the slant height right there, 13, and in this case, the slant height is five. So we're gonna talk about those in these problems, but first let's do the volume. So the volume, we're gonna use this formula here, one third, the area of the base times the height. Okay, so what you do is you take the area of this bottom piece, which is six times six, that's 36, times one third, times the height. Now the height that you wanna use is this overall height, straight down to the center of the base. In that case, this one's four. So this comes out to, let's see, uh, 48 inches cubed, since it's volume. All right, so you're with me so far? What this means, this one third area of the base times the height, remember when we did the prisms, okay, like if I was to draw a prism like say for example like this, okay, just a rough sketch here, what you can see is if these had the same base and they had the same height, if you put this pyramid inside of this prism, you would actually be able to fit three of these inside of there, okay? So this one plus two more, because you can see it's tapered, it's you know angled up to a point like so. So this actually only takes up a third of this volume. So that's where this one third is coming into play. Now. Let's go over to this one. Let's talk about the cone now. So same formula, volume is one third area of the base times the height. In this case, the base is a circle, so we're gonna use the formula pi r squared for a circle, okay, area of a circle, times the height. And again, we wanna use this overall height straight down to the center of the base, that's 12. And uh, let's see, so for the circle, the radius is five, so that's gonna be five squared is 25. Okay, now just a note here to you, and that's that you know, when you're uh, multiplying these together, multiplication is commutative. You can change the order, you're gonna get the same result, right? So I'm gonna take a third of 12, which is four, times 25 is 100 times pi. So this is gonna be 100 pi units cubed. And that's it, you got the volume. Now let's talk about the surface area. So the surface area, the formula we're gonna use for both the pyramid and the cone is area of the base, since you just have one bottom, okay, plus one half the perimeter of the base times the slant height. Okay, and it's the same formula over here, volume is the area of the base plus one half the perimeter times the slant height. But what's different is it's a different shaped base. See, this is a square, so six times six is 36, right? This one over here is a circle, so that's gonna be pi r squared, so pi times five squared. Okay, over here, we're gonna take the perimeter, which is six plus six plus six plus six, four sixes, which is 24, and the slant height or the leaning height, which is five, right? But over here, what we have is we have a circle, so we have to take the perimeter of a circle, which is the circumference, which remember the formula for circumference is two pi r, so two pi times five, times the slant height, so that leaning height, which is 13. So when I think of the L, I think of the, the leaning height, right? Now all we have to do is go back and simplify. So we've got half of uh, 24, which is 12, 12 times five is 60, and we just add the 36 and the 60 together to get 96 inches squared. So remember, square for area, that's two dimensional, cubed for volume, that's three dimensional. For this one, we get five squared is 25 pi. Uh, let's see, two times five is 10, times a half is five, that's five pi times 13 is 65 pi, right? And if we add those together, what do we get? We get 80, uh, 90 pi uh, units squared. Now notice I just left the pi in there, that's an exact answer, but if you wanna get an approximation, you can put 3.14 in for pi, multiply it by 90, and you got it. So again, for pyramids and cones, you wanna think of the two basic formulas, which is the volume formula, see it's the same, one third area of the base times the height. And for the surface area, I wrote volume here, this is surface area, okay, the outer surface, okay, one base, plus one half PL. So it's just the area of the one bottom plus one half the perimeter uh, times the slant height. So let me erase this board and then we're gonna talk about spheres. But the key is to group these together and to make it easier you know, to memorize these formulas. Okay, lastly, we're gonna talk about spheres. But before I get into spheres, I just wanted to mention that if you're preparing for the ACT or the SAT math section and you wanna boost your score, I've got two courses available. You can uh, check them out. I've got links on my 
about page. I'll put links in the description below. But basically, I've got uh, one for the SAT, which goes over 39 concept areas that are important to really you know, boost your score on the test. And then with the ACT math section, I've got 65 concepts. They're really going to depth with teaching and examples and uh, practice problems and so forth to really help you to boost your score. So if you like my teaching style, check out those courses. A lot of students have benefited from them, and I'm sure you will too. But let's talk about spheres now. So a sphere is basically like a circle in three dimensions. You know, it's the set of all points that are equidistant from a given point, which is called the center. So it's basically like a ball, like a basketball, right? And so if we're trying to find the volume, like the inner space, the three-dimensional space, we're gonna be using this formula here. It's 4 thirds pi times the radius cubed. So there's really just that one dimension, the radius. Now sometimes I'll try to confuse you a little bit maybe by giving you the diameter, but you can always cut it in half to get the radius. So for this one, we're just gonna say 4 thirds pi times 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 3 times 3 times 3, which is 27. So we have 4 thirds times pi times 27, which is like 27 over 1. And you can do a little bit of cross-reducing numerator and denominator here. So that ends up coming out to multiply the numerators and denominators together. That gives you 36 pi units cubed. That's the volume, right? Now for the surface area, the form is a little bit different. It's 4 pi r squared, okay? And what we want to do here is just put in our radius, which is 3. So that's 3 squared is 9 times 4 is 36 pi uh, units squared since it's area. That's the outer surface. Now, it's just a coincidence we came out with 36 for both of these, uh, but the formula is different. You won't always get that, that situation. So again, just trying to show you an easy way to group these together, uh, memorize the general formula, and then you can break it down for each specific shape, whether it's a triangular pyramid or it's a square pyramid or it's a cone or whatever type of shape it is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out over the over 400 other videos I have on my Mario's Math Tutor YouTube channel to help you boost your score in your math class, uh, improve your understanding, and make math uh, learning math a lot less stressful. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.